This is Kane. Go Street Family, suck ass! But this may also be Man, Kane. Grove Street ain't even no real game no more, homie. Let me explain. Kane is a character in the Grand Theft Auto series who appears as a minor character in the game, appearing in a total of one cutscene, though it is believed for him to be in the game's introduction. But while he serves as a minor character, he will be listed as the hid honcho in Mission 25. Here is where the GSF plan to take out the leader of the front yard ballers named Kane. Carl, what's up baby brother? What's happening? Peek this. Ten Penny just came by, said that one of them ballers that you and Smoke laid out, Lil Weasel, is getting buried and all the OGs gonna be there. At a funeral? Yeah, we just catch all those ball sack ass niggas at one time. Along with Lil Weasel, Freddy, and Big Papa, Kane does not have a unique character model, simply appearing in a traditional baller uniform, wearing a black scully, black shades, and a dark purple button down. This will of course resemble one of Kane and Harold's car robbers in the film Menace to Society. Get your motherfucking ass up out the car. Alright, nigga, chill. Kane, get out the car, man. Now, many people would assume that this NPC is just a normal baller NPC. However, Kane will be the only Bala officially referred to as a leader. Kane, ain't that cat front yard royalty? And the only Bala wearing body armor. Looks like that bus is wearing armor. Might take a round or two to drop his ass. Which highlights his importance way more. So in that he ain't no regular smuggler ball sack. Who's the asshole? This mission reveals that Tempany gave Sweet Johnson information about Kane attending his friend's funeral, which was Little Weasel. Little Weasel was the reason that all of this unfolded causing CJ to come back after 5 years of being in my aid. Now many people, including myself, associate Kane with the baller from the introduction. But why is that? Well, let's take a look. As Tempany and Pulaski drop off, a scene of three ballers appear in the alleyway. One of them states that the Grove Street families will be soon over, while the baller wearing the black jacket known as Bogman expresses his concern on whether they can trust one of the betraying members of the GSF. But we copping off one of they OGs, man. You sure this is cool? Thinking that it could be a trap to lure them in so they could get smoked. That's when the third baller, believed to be Kane, ensures them that it will be okay. But more importantly, talking about the power of crack cocaine. And this shit changes everybody, man. Even OGs want a slice of this. And loyal customers. <coughs> Guess you're right. That shit changes everything, don't it? For sure. Let's bounce, homie. Now, these ballers were directly working with Crash, so having a leader or the leaders of the ballers to represent them in the drug ring makes sense. Plus, knowing that these ballers have a direct link to Big Smoke shows some type of relationship between him and the front yard ballers. Which, if we look back on, Big Smoke lives directly in their turf, making it seem a bit more logical. Now, we know that this right here is Bogman, and the homie in the purple is dope, but how can we be sure that this is Kane? Well, you see, Rockstar has swapped out outfits for its NPCs throughout its run, and Bogman is a perfect example of this, being seen in the introduction wearing the traditional Bala clothing, which is later swapped out for his purple hoodie and brown hat. This was possibly done with Kane as well, but instead of using some unique outfit for whatever reason, they would swap them out using the generic Bala skin. But when I went back to compare the actual NPC's dialogue, appearances, and overall links, this is what I found. In the game's introduction, the white shirt Bala can be heard talking about killing the leader of the GSF. Grove Street ain't even no real gang no more, homie. They perpetrators. Now they even know. He's highly confident and gives off the vibe of a natural born leader. So with him talking like this, he must hold some type of importance to the Balas. So this can mean leadership or a high ranking member, similar to Big Smoke's position in the GSF. Being second in command. So that's one thing in common so far. But when I actually compare the dialogue of the two, it gets a bit tricky. In Mission 25, the Kane NPC has no dialogue. And honestly, I don't know why that is. We know that Little Weasel had a unique dialogue due to his beta mission. Oh, not this shit again! Ten Penny set me up! So it had me wondering, what if Kane's mission had some type of beta version as well? which I found two videos featuring the beta content. One featuring the white shirt Bala, and the other featuring a Grove Street member with purple clothing. Obviously, we know that this was a fake one, but I'm not too sure on the first one. But given that the homie bases his whole channel off of beta content, I'll give him the benefit of doubt and say that it's real. So Kane is likely to be the same Bala from the introduction. And though I know it's not a lot of evidence, it's enough to convince me. DJ, run that beat.
But now, let's dive into the life of Kane in the front yard ballers. The ballers umbrella holds four main sets, Kilo Trey, Simple Drive, Rolling Heights, and the front yard ballers. The front yard ballers control the district of Idlewood and southern East Los Santos, but due to Idlewood originally being under control of the Grove Street families, it is unlikely that they were the original ballers set. But they rose to prominence after taking Idlewood from the Grove Street families during the early to mid 1980s. But they already established a name for themselves by 1987, as Carl Johnson asked his rider during the mission cleaning the hood. I know his place. It's just across the tracks there. Let's check it out. Hey, ain't that front yard turf? Man, are you a buster? Nah, I'm down, homie. Another importance is their size. Pause. With them being listed as the largest set of the ballers, with the Rolling Heights ballers following behind. Here's the game map to show you their presence, with Front Yard being number one, while number two is Rolling Heights ballers. Ballers. By 1992, the ballers had taken over. There was nothing the GSF could do. This was thanks to a member named Kane, who gained rank as OG during the 90s. Kane introduced the ballers to crack and the crashes plan to run Los Santos with the power of Crack Rock, turning your everyday Joe into the everyday customer. This is where Kane came together with what could be the leaders of Temple Drive and Kilo Trade, though it is unclear of their rank and belonging. But regardless, they will plan to hit on the GSF to get rid of them completely, sparking several events to unfold. They will be first introduced in the mission Tagging Up Turf, where Sweet and CJ spray over six tags in Idlewood and East Los Santos, in which all these tags was front yard baller tags. But during this mission, CJ encounters two front yard ballers and sprays them in the face with spray paint before getting away. However, the first major hit would take place in Cleaning the Hood, in which CJ and Ryder would destroy a front yard crack den in Idlewood. But knowing how the front yard ballers get down, they wouldn't let it slide. They would slide back through Ganton and attack Grove Street during OG Loke's house party. Now this hit didn't go down as planned, and it's unknown if Ryder had any relationship to the front yard ballers, but he does disappear during the attack, so more than likely he does. After this, Sweet Johnson knew he had to weaken the front yard ballers. Luckily, he got a hold of some information from Timpenny about Kane's exact location, pulling up to Little Weasel's funeral and killing Kane instantly. Rest in peace. Little Weasel was a member of the Kilo Trade Ballas, assigned by Kane, Dope, and Bogman to take the Green Saber to Grove Street to shoot and kill Sweet Johnson, which didn't go as planned because obviously Sweet lived and got a hold of Little Weasel and Kane. This would mark the start of the fall of the Ballas. Taking out their main enforcers and leadership led to some members abusing drugs, such as Bogman and Dope. Hey, yeah, 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 what, yeah, what about this blender? It's, it's really good. It, it's, it sort of works. Man, what the fuck? That's Miles Blender! During the end of 1992, the ballers fell and became close to nothing. But I will say, they had a very impressive run. Because in the beginning of 1992, the front yard ballers managed to capture Grove Street in Idlewood, while Kilo Trey ran the game to court projects. But as Tenpenny got paranoid, he began to exile those involved with the Green Saber hit, causing a domino effect, which led to his very own death. Don't. Don't do it, man. He's gone. I just want to be sure it's over, man. That's all. It's cool. Don't need to put a bullet in it. He killed himself in a traffic accident. But this is the story of Kane and the front yard ballers. Let me know if you think this is Kane and if you have any connections that are valid that I didn't state. By the way, I have this banging on wax families and ballers edition coming out. And if you want exclusive access to it in like a month, before anyone else, go to my buy me a coffee and join the membership for $1. That's right! One dollar can get you early access to content, thumbnails, and topics. But that being said, this is your boy, LS Central. Chuckin' out! Smoke shop sweet as a G. Carl is a hustler, smoke is a bitch. Ryder is a buster, Kendall was a homie, but she fucked with a sucker. Posting on the set, looking out for the busters.